So we're very quickly getting to the discussion of treatments. Uh, it's come up already several times, and you all know that new Na uh, National Psoriasis Foundation AAD guidelines have come up uh, with a committee that's put a lot of work into these guidelines. We, we haven't seen all the guidelines yet, but many of them are out. Uh, Brad, do you want to tell us about those? Well, we have two. I mean, there are two that really were just published uh, in February of this year. Uh, the first one is just essentially about biologic therapies and the use of biologic therapies and their role. Uh, obviously, it re reviews a lot about the current targeted pathogenesis of, uh, of psoriasis. And really the second one is focusing on comorbidities that we've really kind of just discussed already and how we sort through those comorbidities. And as I mentioned before too, how we approach our patients, the questions that we ask them. And there are many comorbidities, even just beyond the scope of those that we've talked already to, psoriatic arthritis, um, cardiovascular disease, Inflammatory bowel disease, there are others, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, um, chronic kidney disease, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, many of these comorbid phenomena. I, as a clinician right now, I'm starting to see them more frequently in my psoriasis patients where I really didn't recognize and I didn't take heed to that as much. And the guidelines are really useful, in my view, having looked through them for sure, uh, in addressing these factors that even go beyond the current common uh, comorbidities, and there are emerging comorbidities too. So I think these guidelines are very important for all of our colleagues uh, in dermatology. So I think um, early guidelines have dealt with every facet of therapy. Um, for example, oral therapy. Why don't we start with that? Um, uh, I'm sure every one of you uses a lot, lots of oral therapies in our psoriasis patients. Uh, well, you know, for me, not so much anymore, actually. I, I, I have certainly, in, in, in a historical perspective, have used a lot of oral agents uh, for, for psoriasis, uh, methotrexate, topical. Like sport, uh, topical therapy as well. Um, but, you know, I think, I think I'm more apt to hear about quality of life and decide to maybe transition from topical therapy to a uh, systemic agent uh, quicker or even phototherapy. Um, I also think, uh, you know, my, my head always goes towards um, systemic inflammation these days. And so, uh, whereas I use topical therapy um, often, uh, in moderate to severe psoriasis patients, I still use phototherapy, but I think about whether, you know, having ebbs and flows of systemic inflammation is really a good thing for the patient. And I'm really going much more quickly towards at least offering a biologic uh, to a patient, either because I believe that their psoriasis is sort of in the moderate to severe category by BSA, or they do in terms of the impact on their quality of life. I, so I, I, I just want to say one sure, issue, sure, because sure. the majority of patients still have mild to moderate disease. Uh, probably 80%. So there's a huge proportion of patients who have just plaques on their elbows. Or, and, and I think most of the time, sometimes we will give them a systemic therapy, but most of the time we'll give them topical therapy. Uh, wouldn't you agree? Oh, yes, I, I would say definitely agree. Um, although I have to say in my, I, I, I don't see, I, certainly not 80% of the you. patients in my right. practice are, do, do not have mild psoriasis. Right. So from, from, from the patients that I see, but yes, of course, uh, you know, there's the, you know, most of the patients have mild disease and certainly topical therapy is, is appropriate. I was just going to say the same thing that, you know, my topical therapy, monotherapy patients really have a limited amount of plaques because just like Scott, I mean, I'm, I'm really thinking a systemic disease because I think it's more to just treating their skin even when they have very limited disease. And, you know, I look at their nails. I look for pits. I'm worried that even someone with the least amount of psoriatic skin disease may move on and get uh, psoriatic arthritis. And, and so I, I think much the same way you do. Uh, but, but it is true that most of our patients seem to have reasonably localized skin disease. And, but, you know, and most of our colleagues are, are just giving topical therapies. But in, in my practice, uh, and I think like Dr. Gottlieb's as well too, I'm really thinking more systemic therapies because we've all, I believe, bought into that this is a systemic immune-mediated uh, auto-inflammatory disease, and I think it requires in most patients more than topical therapy. And when I think of topical therapy, I either think it in the mild disease category, or I look at it as add-on, just as we were talking about before for residual plaques. And, we, and, and, and we're able to use the topical therapies that before that we were using in large body surface areas, and they weren't that successful. And now they're much more successful, whether it be corticosteroids, whether it be a topical vitamin D analog, and uh, topical calcium urine inhibitors for limited areas 
areas like the folds where we struggled before our patients were overusing corticosteroids. So systemic therapies have really helped us be better users, if you will, of even topical therapies. And, and I, I see it kind of like a puzzle. It's interesting because we have these pieces, right? Yes. We know psoriasis is linked to underlying increased inflammation increased cytokines, and those same cytokines play a role in atherosclerosis, and we know that our patients have a higher cardiovascular morbidity and mortality. So it, I think it's only a matter of time, probably, that last link of when we put our patients on these systemic therapies, having really convincing good data that we're not, that we're doing them a disservice by not doing that, that I think will kind of change the thinking. But we're, I think we're getting there. I mean, so we're do you think ma close. mainly in the in that mild population too? Because clearly, patients but with the, mild diseases still, right. have cord cardiovascular risk as well too. It may not be to the extent of patients with severe disease, but uh, I'm with you because we may be uh, offering up a disservice to our patients if we're not treating aggressively at all levels of psoriasis. So I, I, you know, I do want to put a little perspective on here. When uh, Joel Gelfand and his group published the data on the association between myocardial infarctions and psoriasis, he separated out into mild, moderate, and severe and defined them. The mild patients were one using top, ones using topical therapy. The severe ones were the ones on systemic therapies or phototherapy. And uh, the mild patients had very little increased risk. They, there was an increased risk, but it was, it was much less than the severe patients, much less. So, yeah. uh, and it was not statistically significantly increased. So I, I think we need to actually be concerned about systemic inflammation in patients with severe disease. And I'm not saying to ignore it in patients with mild disease, but it is less worrisome. You said something, um, Brad, which was, I think, completely on target, which is you can have very mild psoriasis and horrific psoriatic arthritis. Um, and so that's what we have to be on the lookout for.